Hello, everyone. Welcome to Noon Prayer here in the upper room. Grateful to gather together today, this Wednesday in Holy Week. And we've been uh, in here every evening this week for our Holy Week prayer services and uh, grateful to double up today on prayer. Uh, I know I need it, uh, thinking this week uh, as we're coming to the end of Lent thought about uh, those disciples in the garden falling asleep <laughs> and how often I find myself being one of them where it's, it's hard to, to stay in, to stay present. And so uh, I think that's an invitation for all of us, everybody here in the room, everyone joining online, welcome to you as well. Uh, let's be present to the presence of God here in this moment. Amen. Would you stand with me? As we begin... Let's pray responsively our psalm from the lectionary today, Psalm 70, where on the screens it's underlined. We'll read that out loud together. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who you love your salvation say forever, great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So we pour 
goodness and your faithfulness, and especially this week of your sacrifice, your willingness 
to go to the cross to suffer to give to forgive there's no one like you Lord Jesus let us pray the prayer for this holy Wednesday Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who, Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Upon a hill, a perfect Savior, upon that day, the greatest love, the sacrifice that brought about our healing. Upon Him, upon Him, upon His head, a crown of thorns, upon His heart, a broken world, the wage of sin, the weight of our transgression. forgiven in Christ alive we are the risen and he shall come again praise the king praise the king upon our hearts his name is written the king of kings Lord of Lords, we're pouring out a song of praise together.
Christ has died. We are forgiven in Christ alive. We are the risen. He shall come again. Praise the King. Oh, praise the King. praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you for your works of love to us. Would you make us more like you? And beholding you, we would be formed into your likeness, Lord Jesus. Now let us pray the prayer Jesus gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated here in the upper room. Welcome to Wednesday in Holy Week. And uh, bonus points if you're online or in the building. Uh, two uh, Wednesday in Holy Week services, our regular noon prayer service. And then we'll be back here tonight, 6 p.m. And then tomorrow is Monday, Thursday. So we'll be back here in the upper room and online at 6 p.m. And then Good Friday, uh, 7 p.m. online and in the sanctuary. And uh, speaking of Good Friday, there's also a funeral here. If you haven't heard, uh, our brother Cliff McFadden uh, passed away, and there's a visitation at Meyerhofer's uh, Thursday night and then Friday morning, Good Friday. Um, we are going to celebrate the life of our brother, Cliff McFadden. Um, I'm offering the eulogy and was preparing for that, and the family gave me one of his uh, prayer journals, prayer diaries. And in it, he describes uh, how he would pray, uh, giving God thanks for the blood of Jesus. And uh, so it's fitting that we will uh, celebrate his life on Good Friday. Uh, but then 7 p.m., Good Friday service online and in person. Holy Saturday, we are quiet uh, while Christ is in the tomb. And then you know what happens on Sunday morning. Uh, that's Easter. I'm looking forward to that. Well, let's pray uh, for those uh, that are in need. Uh, someone texted me after the prayer service uh, last Wednesday and said, I didn't realize we had so much going on in our church. And uh, it is true. There, there's a number of people that are in need. And I will communicate on their behalf to you that they appreciate your prayers. Um, you know, Larry and Chris Buman just lost uh, their sister. There was a funeral in Easton this morning. And uh, just other folks that are fighting battles and need provision and need healing. And so they appreciate that we are joining our hearts together uh, to pray for them. So let's do that. And at the end of these three sections, as you know, there's a line that we all pray together. I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and then together hear our prayer. Let's pray. We are drawing near to you, O Lord, through Holy Week. It's not a normal week. It's a, it's a set-apart week. It's a sacred week. It's a holy week where we want to draw near to Jesus in his sorrow and suffering and Lord, we're also drawing near those that are in suffering, those, Lord, who are in need, who have reached out to us requesting intercession and prayer. And so, Lord, on their behalf, we lift to you the needs that they have. Lord, for the Buman family in their time of grief and the McFadden family in their time of grief, we ask, Lord, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon them. Lord, most of us here praying, we know what it's like to lose someone that we love. We've, we've walked through a season of grief, and so we, we draw near to those that are grieving, and we ask that your spirit would draw near, um, that, Lord, they would have comfort and peace. Uh, Friday morning, Lord, for the funeral service for Cliff, 
I know, Lord, that it's his desire that Jesus, you be lifted up and glorified. So help us to do that and minister to the, the family and the friends of Cliff McFadden. And Lord, for so many others that are in need of healing, oh God, would you hear their prayers and bring healing to Ian in, in Wales who has a head injury. We pray, Lord, that you would bring healing and wholeness so he can get back home. Lord, for Randall, who has a going to have a mass removed, and they're praying, Lord, that there would be a good report from that biopsy. We, we agree with that in the name of Jesus. Lord, for Gary Wheeler, who's home from the hospital but in uh, recovery after his appendix ruptured before they could remove it, Lord, he knows he has a road of recovery. So we pray, Lord, for his healing and his strengthening in the name of Jesus. Lord, we remember an online member in California who has chronic migraines. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would bring healing and comfort to him. Lord, and then for Porter and for Rita, for Mark and Nancy, John, Jerry, and Quinna, Lord, we pray, we come asking and seeking and knocking. We come praying once again, O oh Lord, for their healing, that they would be made whole in the name of Jesus. Lord, for both Charlie and Tyrese who have surgeries coming up, we pray that you would go ahead of this surgery, that they would be successful, that they would recover quickly. And Lord, we ask that you would bless us as we move towards Good Friday, the cross, and Easter, the resurrection. Lord, as we pray, as we enter into the story, as we reflect on the sorrow of the cross, Lord, may we all together experience the joy of resurrection that comes on Easter Sunday. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you would bless our city, St. Joseph, and all of the cities represented by those that are praying today. We pray, Lord, that you would bless us. Lord, we, we thank you for those that, that care for the infrastructure of our city. Lord, we pray for your grace to be upon the city of Baltimore after that bridge collapse. We pray you would comfort, Lord, the, the hearts of those that, that lost someone that they loved. And Lord, in thinking of that, we pray for our city, that you would bless those who work to sustain our roads and bridges and utilities here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our world, Lord, we pray for peace. Jesus, you entered into the holy city of Jerusalem weeping, for they did not know the things that make for peace. We pray, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit on all people, on all nations, that we might learn the ways of peace. And as we worship Christ crucified on Good Friday, Lord, would you bring all people, all nations to yourself? And as we worship Christ risen on Easter, may people be drawn to churches all over the world that they might hear and be transformed by the gospel of peace. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, it is with grateful hearts that we lift up these requests to you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Our gospel reading today is from John 13. I'm not going to lead us in a reflection of the Palm Sunday reading, because again, Holy Week is just, well, it's different. It's holy, it's sacred, it's set apart. And so the gospel reading for Wednesday in Holy Week is Jesus gathered with his disciples where he identifies the betrayer. And this is actually an event that would take place on Monday, Thursday. So it actually would take place uh, tomorrow. If you're with us in our evening Holy Week services, Pastor Brian's leading us through each of these days. Um, so this is not a Wednesday event. This is a Thursday event. But the lectionary gives it to us as a gospel reading. And so we will reflect upon it. In John's gospel, it says when Jesus has his uh, disciples all gathered together in that upper room. Uh, John mentions how much Jesus loved them even to the end. And Jesus loved all of them. He loved all 12 of those disciples. And out of that love, you'll remember Jesus strips down to just a towel, and he takes on the form of the lowliest of servants to wash the feet of the disciples. He washed all their feet. 
He washed even the feet of Judas, who was to betray him. And I wonder what that moment was like, because Jesus is about ready to reveal that Judas is the one. At least he reveals it to, to John and Peter. And I imagine in that moment, as Jesus is kneeling at the feet of the one who would betray him and washing his feet, I wonder if Jesus looked him in the eyes. And I wonder in that moment if, if Judas uh, had a moment of... Um, receiving mercy from the Lord. What a humbling act. Um, I don't know if you've been a part of a foot washing service at any time, but it's a, it's a humbling act to allow someone else to wash your feet. And for Judas, this would be the one he was betraying. So after Jesus washes their feet, John, the beloved disciple, is leaning up against Jesus, and Jesus is explaining that there's a betrayer, and of course, Peter wants to know who it is, and elbowing John, hey, John, ask him who it is. And Jesus says, he who dips bread with me in the cup, this, this is the one who's the betrayer. Uh, by the way, this is where the tradition of intinction comes from, um, you know, taking bread and dipping it in the cup. This comes from the scene in, in the gospel where Jesus is not going to just share a table but even share a cup with even the one who would betray him. And as you hear this gospel reading in just a moment, um, after Jesus makes this announcement, there's this short little line that says, and it was night, which is not just telling you the time of day. I think metaphorically, this is speaking of the experience of Judas, because for Judas, he is all in in the betrayal of Jesus. And so for Judas, this becomes a dark night of the soul. And Judas must have been a tortured individual because if you remember, Judas repents. Most people don't recall that part of the Judas story. Judas's life ends tragically, he takes his own life. But before he does that, he goes back to the chief priests and throws them back their money. And he says, what have I done? I have, I, I have turned in an innocent man. So I wonder when in John's gospel it says it was night, if that's not speaking about Judas and the dark night of the soul he was experiencing. And of course, with Holy Week, as the days grow closer and closer to Good Friday and Holy Saturday, it is getting darker. Uh, the, the passion, the suffering of Jesus is only ramping up. Okay, so let's give attention to this reading from John chapter 13. And uh, after the gospel reading, I'll pray uh, for just a little bit in response, and then we'll prepare ourselves for Holy Communion. And if you're with us online, make sure you have some communion elements with you so you can celebrate with us. But first, a reading from the gospel of John. After saying this, Jesus was very troubled in spirit and declared, very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter, therefore, mentioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had a common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give some to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in his self and will glorify him at once. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as we're drawing near to you in these final 
days you have with your disciples. Oh, Lord Jesus, we see you identifying the one who would betray you. And Lord, what grace, what mercy was given to Judas in that moment. And Lord, as the disciples, not knowing what would happen, did experience, Lord, falling upon them evening or night. And Lord, I believe it was a a dark night for Judas as he was going to go out and betray you. Lord, as these days grow closer to Good Friday for us, Lord, we do sense your, your sorrow and your suffering increasing. So, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would bless us with grace on this Lenten journey. That, Lord, as we enter into the darkness of your sorrow and suffering, that we would not lose sight of you. That, Lord Jesus, we wouldn't turn away from you in your suffering, but we would embrace it fully. Knowing, Jesus, that you have called us to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, to take up an an emblem of death and shame and follow you. So, Lord, empower us by your Holy Spirit that in these closing days of Lent we might follow close to you in your sorrow and suffering. And so, Lord, prepare us for Easter Sunday morning. Lord, these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand up with me if you would. We'll prepare ourselves for a moment of holy communion. The sacred meal has been given to us as a way to commune with Jesus. And here in Holy Week, we're communing with Jesus in his brokenness, in his sorrow and suffering. And so join me as we make a twofold confession. First, confessing our Christian faith, and then we'll confess our sins together. But let's first start with a confession of faith. Join me if you would. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now with humility of heart, let's confess our sins together. Most merciful God, We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. And God is gracious to all who confess their sins and in humility ask for mercy. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. And now in this sacred moment during the sacred week, we come to commune with Jesus and so we come confessing that this cup of blessing that we bless This is our participation in Jesus' shed blood. And this bread which is broken, this is our participation in the broken body of Jesus. The body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb, and the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone Oh praise the name of the Lord our God Oh praise His name forevermore for The Son of Heaven rose again. Oh, trampled death, where is your sting? For the angels roar for Christ the King. Oh, praise the name of the Lord.
amen and amen. Well, I do hope you can join us for our final days in Holy Week, Good Friday, Easter Sunday. Uh, for those of you in person, I'm starting an Easter Bible study uh, next Wednesday. It's one o'clock in the Life Center, right after noon prayer. Uh, if you'd like to join us, if you were part of the Advent Bible study that I did, it's like that. I'll pick some resurrection passages for about eight weeks on Wednesdays, and we'll look at the scripture, discuss it together. You're invited to that if you are interested. No, I will not feed you. You'll have to bring a sack lunch, or you can fast, or whatever. Um, but I know it's, uh, it's been a good time. Perry did a, a class through the Psalms, and there's been a Lenten a small group happening at one, and those are going well. So I'm up next, next Wednesday, 1 p.m. Let me send you out now with the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you. Go in peace.